Hey guys, Shane here. Welcome to another figure painting tutorial. Um, in this uh, tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at painting Bravo 6's War Daddy figure, which is in fact based on uh, Brad Pitt's um, character. I think his name is Don, Don Colder, I think I remember, from Fury, which is the tank commander. So, in this tutorial, we're going to be looking how to paint US tankers from the Second World War. So before we get painting, before we get priming, and beginning the meat and uh, the meat of the tutorial, I'm going to talk about how I prepared this figure. So, in order to wash off any oils or release agents that will affect how paint adheres to the model when we come to paint it, I gave this model a bath in warm or lukewarm soapy water. Now, um, depending on what you read. Um, and I can only speak from my own experiences, try not to use washing up liquid when it comes to the soap. Um, from what I've read, washing up liquid comes with an oil, that, like a film, that um, covers your hands to protect your hands from all the oil and gunk from the dishes and shit that you're watching, washing. Um, so all you'll do is, if you use washing up liquid, is replace one oil on the model with another, and thus defeats the purpose. So what I did was, just your standard bathroom hand soap, and it also smells like lavender now. It's all lovely. So I um, basically put into lukewarm water, left all the parts under casting tabs, let it soak for about, I left it soak for about two hours. Um, minimum, you want to be soaking it for at least 30 minutes. Um, just let, leave it in there for a while and then uh, remove it and very gently give it a scrub with an old soft toothbrush. Being very careful not to break any components from there then I assembled the model using uh, in this case gel Gorilla Glue and, and just use a toothpick pick to apply it a little amount here and there uh, doesn't require that much and I also drilled a hole in the foot of the model and inserted a paper clip and a little bit of super glue on both ends of the paper clip to glue the, the end of the paper clip to the foot of the model and the other end to this piece of cork which is a wine bottle cap and this will be our handle for handling the model in the tutorial. Um, other little things that required preparation before we came to this point. Uh, a little bit of filling was done here and there using Vallejo plastic putty. This is a water soluble putty so I just applied it again with a sharpened cocktail to stick to the joints of the arms. You can see some of the residue over there and basically with my, just dampened my finger in water and wiped it away so all the excess but the stuff in the gaps um, was removed and there we have it. So the model now is ready for priming. So how I like to prime my figures, um, just like how um, Ian from that 135th scale show uh, does his, which I strongly recommend, I'll put a link to his channel and his tutorials on figure painting. He is arguably one of the finest figure painters in our community and well worth checking out his show and his figure painting tutorials because he, he works a lot with oils and he's, he's good, he's good. So the reason why we often prime with grey rather than black, there's, no re there's nothing wrong with priming with black, but grey allows you to see the detail. It also gives you an idea where the shadows might be. And then we'll do, I like to do a kind of a, a, a form of pre-shading then or counter-shading as some people in the figure painting world call it which is basically just running a darker colour around some of the dark, like, areas where there would be the most shadow on the model. I'll cover this all. So the first part is to give it a few coats of grey surface primer. In this case I'm using Vallejo surface primer grey. Okay so let's start priming our model. I've given the bottle a very good shake. The pressure setting on my, air, on my compressor now is 21 psi and the airbrush I'm using is Harden Steenbeck um, Evolution CR Plus, just in case you're wondering. If not, if you're using a brush, then you can just simply brush paint this on as well. So, let's begin. Here we have it. Um, I've basically just slowly built up that colour. Um, it looks like I might not even have to go back. I probably will just give it another coat just to, once it's destroyed to be sure. Trick is keep your PSI reasonably high. 
keep the airbrush held at some distance away from the model and just keep the model moving and you get yourself a nice even coat. So I'm going to give this another coat of um, primer, let them all dry, leave, probably leave it for at least 24 hours to dry and then we're going to start our counter shading process. Okay so now we're going to begin what is known as counter shading. It's basically um, fancy figure talk for pre-shading. So any type of colour you have as like a black, you can also use a number if you have it. Uh, in this case I'm going to be using model colour, or sorry should I say model air from Falejo, uh, black grey uh, as I'm all out of uh, flat black and this will do the job just as well. So I'm going to take my airbrush and turn my, um, my PSI setting right down to 1 PSI. Nice slow air, um, nice low pressure and I'm going to put a couple of drops into my airbrush not too much, don't need too much and then maybe just one drop of thinner because I want this to be quite thin uh, I don't want it to be too heavy and swamp the model so maybe just a drop or two just to help us um, uh, to help us along and also you'll know I have a small piece of paper I use this just for testing the consistency of my, mod of my uh, paint so I can do a fine line up and yeah so we're just going to basically um, spray in the creases kind of inner legs the waistline and any other area we see like dark uh, anywhere you think that um, shadows would appear Our basic pre-shading. Um, again, this is somewhat optional. If you're, like, you can only easily do this with washes too later on. But uh, I just find uh, that sometimes this can be beneficial, and also it changes the hue of the paint. So when you start building up our layers, and because the U.S. tanker uniform is more or less monotoned, um, it does make sense to add a little bit of pre-shade just to. Um, just to uh, add a little bit of variation to the shades that we'll be achieving. So there we have it. So what's go what we're going to do now is I'm going to start adding in the uh, skin tones. Um, I'm not going to be like I'm going to fairly speed through this part as I already have a tutorial. So uh, a link should pop up to that video if you want to know how I paint faces. said helps them in focus um, please uh, check out my how to paint faces tutorial um, part one and two if you want to see how I uh, go about painting faces um, and and or check out uh, Ian from that 135th scales um, tutorial too because it's very good so now that we're done with the flesh and his hair though um, I've yet to put a wash to make his hair look a bit more greasy and to tone the, the blondness down um, we're going to start working on the uniform. Okay, so we're going to start laying our base coats for his overalls. So as you can see, I've masked his face, and I've also added. I'll just draw your attention very quickly to it. A small piece of stretch sprue, which you probably cannot see, to be a cigarette because he's uh, he's clutching a cigarette and uh, taking a drag. So um, for the base color for our um, tanker's overalls, we're going to be using. Um, Faleho model color German camo beige and uh, I'm going to be applying this through the airbrush uh, even though this is a model um, even though this is a model color paint it can be tinned for airbrush use 
However, um, you do have to keep it quite thin, as this paint is quite thick. So I'm going to make uh, I'm going to make the mixture to a milky consistency. I don't mind having to use multiple um, layers to achieve this. blocking some of the main colours so if you know he's wearing gloves which is the kind of style, um, same style pattern that paratroopers wear so that's almost um, a tannish colour so um, I'm actually going to make a mix of model colour or should I say uh, model colour uh, pants races which is the um, uh, the Flejo colour series base for um, armour models and model colour Japanese uniform. I'm going to mix a 50-50 and um, apply that mix to the gloves. So. adding a uh, shade to the model so I will be using uh, Agrid Earthshade from Citadel as uh, it's from their washes so I'll be applying Agrid Agrat's Earthshade to the uniform and leather areas and I'll be applying null oil to the metallics shading done for the model. Um, the best thing to do when working with washes, um, especially acrylic based uh, washes such as the, the ones from Citadel that dry relatively quick, is to ensure that you lay your wash in one sitting and try to keep the wash as even as possible. Don't let it pool in one area in particular, try to keep it quite even um, and you should get the best results that way. You can also add a lot of variation to your model by using different coloured wash washes, whether it be making them at home yourself by watering down paints. About 10% uh, paint to about 90% water, you can make very nice filters and washes that add different tints to your base coats. So uh, the washing process is very easy and allows us to do quite a bit with our model and to the tones we want to manipulate. So I'll let this dry probably take about an hour or so for this to dry and then we'll begin to do a highlight and uh, we'll work on the highlight process and then we'll uh, call this tutorial uh, uh, done so, we, so we will okay now that our wash has been allowed to fully dry uh, we're going to start working on the highlights just before I start that I may or may not have forgotten to film a certain segment of the painted tutorial however it was not important um, just for point of reference, if you noticed, you might notice at some point during the tutorial, his trousers go from beige to green. So I painted them German field grey from Flail model colour. And for the brown, uh, for the brown the bases for the leather and the stock and his shoulder harness for his sidearm, were also painted Flail flat brown. So now that that's out of the way, I have uh, made myself up a basic wet palette. This is just a piece of parchment paper which. Uh, with the help of Ian, told me that this was simply grease, grease proof paper. So you can get, buy this in your, your local um, shopping uh, or food market or grocery store or whatever you like to call it. So we're going to start working with our, our base tone. So we're going to start highlighting his field jacket. So I'm going to take the base colour, which was German camo beige. Take a little bit of base colour 
and mix a little bit of white into the mix. And you can do this as progressively or as subtly as you like, it's totally up to you. So I'm first time using a, a, um, a wet palette, uh, something, or oh, this is just a piece, piece, piece of parchment paper uh, in a basin with a tiny amount of water underneath it. Water soaks through the parchment paper and basically gives your, your paints a little bit of extra life and keeps them a little bit more thinned. So I'm going to take this colour, I'm um, using my number 3 brush, so my, my, whiting, uh, my white brush for what I do for all my blocking work. And I'm just going to begin to pick the highlights. So the easiest part I'm going to start here, and I hope you guys can see, is I'm going to start up here on his collar and just slowly kind of work that in. highlight for his jacket again just using the uh, technique that I explained I just focus the lighter color to the most um, highest reaches of the folds basically just leaving the base shade in the deepest recesses of the model quite explanatory stuff <coughs> and something that most of you would be familiar with if you watched any of my tutorials in the past so I'm going to add a final highlight layer to um, some of the top, like um, upper recesses or um, or tops of the creases, should I say? And just one or two to the rank chevrons, just to uh, make them stand out a little bit. So I'm going to start picking out the furry tops of the creases. <laughs> I didn't go too crazy with the the last highlight. I don't want this too light, and I'm going to be focused on the upper elements of his jacket. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean my brush. And I'm going to start highlighting his trousers. So for the first highlight, I'm just going to use a, an older brush just to mix our paint. So I'm going to take our German field grey from Vallejo. I only want a slight, um, very subtle um, highlight. So I'm actually going to put a little bit of camo beige into it. So I'm done with this colour now, so I don't have to worry about contaminating it. More. Okay, just put a little bit of water through it, just to tint it slightly. So as we start mixing our paints, they do get a bit thicker. And there we have our first highlight colour for his trousers. And I'm going to switch back to my my uh, number three brown brush. And do exactly the same drill as with the the jacket.
basic highlights for his trousers. I don't want these to be too stark as um, kind of the olive drab type um, trousers that were issued to American troops was quite um, subtle. However, if you want to wear it even more, just keep adding successive layers of olive or not olive drab of um, German camo beige into it. Uh, that should like adequately uh, lighten the colour. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start highlighting his inner shirt that you can just see there through his open jacket. So I'm going to take some German um, uniform from Vallejo and just kind of trace it out. It's a little bit bright, but I'm be too concerned to overexpose it because I wanted to stand out a little bit. I think I might have overworked it there slightly. So I'm going to go back to the original colour and just, uh, just tap that back down. And there we have kind of a simple highlight there for his inner jacket. I'm too crazy. So the colour for his gloves. And the gloves are a mixture of Panzer, uh, Phileo Panzer Aces Middle Stone and model colour Japanese uniform in a 50-50 mix. All the colours I'm using are Phileo and if I say otherwise, so if I don't mention the brand that's the reason why. So I'll just assume. So I'm just going to mix up a bit more of it, this time with a slightly, slightly more Japanese uniform. And that's going to be my highlight colour. So just mixing that up. I'm going to add a tiny little dab of white to it. Not a lot, but just a small amount. And this should give me a nice hue to it. Okay, so I'm going to start painting in these fingers. So I'm going to use my, my fine pointed brush to do this is a number one and just begin to paint in the knuckles the tops of the fingers and the fingertips leaving gaps where the, in between each knuckle I'm not going to try to do individual ranks 
Frank Chevron but just enough to uh, the note that they're there so I put maybe a dark wash over it. a tedious part of this actually is not the part I was looking forward to doing if I do tell the truth so I'm going to take our flat brown which I used unfortunately I didn't record this part earlier in the tutorial but again painting in straight lines isn't that difficult so I'm going to take my base color which was um, flat brown and just go back over the leather areas but this time I'm not going into any of the recesses where the colour is dark, so just where the light would hit it the heaviest. And this is just going to facilitate the uh, layers I'm going to put on on top of this. So again, helps so keep everything in frame. Because you, know, you guys may like wa <laughs> may want to see what I'm doing. So we're almost there now. I know this has been a bit of a long tutorial, but shouldn't take too much longer. It'll be ready when it's ready, as they say. Now, since I'm still working on these harness, I'm going to keep focusing on that, and I'm just going to keep adding red. So I'm just going to take me some uh, brown, flat brown, and then mark, mix in some dark red. A bit more dark red. And I'm also going to mix in a small bit of cork brown. Again, all from Vallejo. up the boots because the boots will probably get the most wear even though he's not an infantry man so he's not going to be doing as much marching as as um as your average foot soldier but still it will still get more wear than his holster and once again I'm just stabbing in my red brown mixture you can kind of see a very faint difference in colour and that's what we want. We don't want it too stark too quick. It's better to build that up in successive layers because it just means we can control that transition. And the more control you have over the transition of colour, the better. I'm just going to focus on the top of the boots so I'll focus quite a bit of that red colour into the top of the boots and up onto this little area here, the shelf I'm going to paint in the laces using um, kind of a cork brown mix um, but uh, I'll do that 
later on. So it's going to be exactly the same for the other boot. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to mix in, make a second mixture using my red brown mix. But this time I'm going to put quite a, a large dollop of cork brown into it. So make it almost like kind of a, kind of almost I can't call this like almost a smoky color. And I'm going to remove most of it from my brush, and I'm going to stab that into the leading edge of his of his um, of his shoe, and that's how I'm going to simulate um, wear on the leather. Just really just focusing around the heel and the toe of the boot, and that's how I'll do it there. So nice nice and simple you can't really quite see but when you pull the camera in in a few moments you will and it's identical on the other side of the boot so it's no different and you can use as much red as much um, uh, different colors of brown as you wish to, to make transitions I tend to keep my boots a bit simple because I tend to weather them anyway as I put a bit of dirt pigment and what have you on them so I have to do the belt. I have to probably do the the buckles in a uh, north grey and then like kind of like a and uh, kind of like a, a rock grey. And then he also he also has a knife in his boot. That I'm gonna pick out using uh, uh, just flat brown and a bit of cork brown for grain. So I'm gonna keep going. Welcome back to this final L, uh, installment of our tutorial. So I've done a little bit of work off off screen. However, um, it's just stuff that was a little bit fiddly to do under camera. So I've painted in his armor diffusion markings. So I'll talk about the armor diffusion markings first. And these are painted with Citadel colors because I was fine they do the nicest prime colors. So the blue was painted Macraga blue. And then a tiny amount of white was mixed into it once the base color had set. And in a way I dry brushed, meaning that well, it wasn't really a dry brush in the sense, but I put a tiny amount of paint onto my brush using a very fine bristle and I tapped the lighter blue into the centre of the darker colour to, to lighten it slightly. The red was painted once again with Citadel Mephiston Red and similarly uh, with Evil Sun's Yellow I believe or Evil Sun's Scar uh, Scarlet from Citadel once again I tapped that into the middle of the colour. The yellow was with Humbrel Acrylic however if you any other type of flat yellow or um, slightly dark yellow um, I would use that colour. I kind of want this to be slightly muted, I didn't want to over expose it too much because I want these uniforms to be slightly worn. And again that was just painted in with a very small brush, I used number zero for this task for all the various colours of his patch and the only reason why I did it off camera was well you guys wouldn't have seen it anyway because it's just the way it's done, my hand would have blocked it. Okay. So with that out of the way, then I went to this probably the trickiest part that took me a many many goes. These rank markings. Now these rank markings you can see here and on the other arm. Okay, and how they were done was I actually didn't paint them perfectly. I actually get the impression of them and let your eye and your knowledge of rank markings do the rest. So I just took, I painted in my rank chevrons with the base colour and if you recall the base colour is Vallejo model colour German camo beige repainted it and then with a very fine brush I used a double zero for this I just basically looking at reference photographs of Brad Pitt's actual costume just painted and etched in the the, the black threads that make up the individual chevrons of his rank and I was just done with a very tiny amount of paint, built it up, and he's to come back with a little bit of beige to clean it up. This arm was a slightly bit more difficult to do because it's creased, however, it still has the same effect. And that was the only stuff I did off camera. Actually, no, wait, there was one other thing I did off camera, and that's when I noticed that there is the elastic parts of his jacket, as in his collar has elastic uh, elasticity to it, as does his sleeves and his waist. So if you kind of turn around the back here, you kind of see the kind of a green tint around the colour. And I didn't want to repaint the colour onto it. I can actually, I was sort of using washes. And I like using a lot of Citadel acrylic washes. And I used um, a Tonian uh, camo shade. 
which is like a green wash. Again, you could just use one of your um, reflective green or uh, field grey as a wash if you wished by just mixing about 90% water to 10% paint and use that and paint that on. And now it's applied to the cuffs, the collar and the waistband. And that uh, is quite fitting. I already noticed that when I looked at some reference photographs of Brad Pitt's uniform. You also have a better view of how the leather turned out. It's using the basic highlighting te technique. Very simple to do. So, to wrap up this model, or well actually, and the pistol handle, which you can kind of see there, was just painted off white, and that's going to get a gloss coat when this model is, is uh, sealed because. If you look at the uh, set photographs of Brad's um, costume, you'll notice that it gets a really shiny veneer. So uh, to replicate that, I'm going to give that a gloss coat once this model is matte coated. So now to add a little bit of grind to the model, and how I'm going to achieve this, I'm actually going to use, which I find very handy for figure weathering, I'm going to use um, Tamiya's Weathering Master Set A. There you go. Small little makeup style. Um, uh, weathering set. However, do not hand the model until you seal it when, when, once you apply this because you will smudge it. So I'm going to just take a slightly older brush because I'm not going to bother use the, the brush supplied because it's, um, it's more designed for open application and I want mine to be a bit more closed in. So I'm going to dampen my brush, again it's usually a, a really old and accurate brush. I'm going to dampen my brush, mix in somewhere you can see here, there we go going to mix in some mud because I want it to be a little bit muddy and again you can forego this if you if you wish it's totally up to you and it's going to start applying it a little bit to the model randomly and build this up don't don't try to lay it in one go and you don't kind of more focusing around the knees the ankles the seat of the pants the elbows as well now, bear in mind, he's a tank crewman. He's not going to get too much mud on his uniform, unless um, he's been like like a, unless his assembly area, for example, is very muddy, then he will pick up. So I'm just kind of slowly building up this colour. I don't want it too strong. Just 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 enough to kind of give um, an impression of grime. So we don't want to start losing all the highlight work we did either. Sometimes the best, most realistic thing to do is not go overly re re realistic, because at the end of the day we need to scale everything back to for it to work um, for our eyes to basically scale down the effect we are looking at. It looks very unusual otherwise. Now I've mixed a lot of water into this. You can see how loads my brushes. I'm going to remove the excess, and I'm just going to basically apply a little bit to randomly to use his jacket just to grime him up a little bit you know tanks are after all quite dirty and especially when they've been operating for extended periods of time the crews don't really have the time to really be cleaning their vehicles now do they so just kind of applying it here and there using as you can see how, how wide the bristles are in my brush that's good because that in ensures that it's always going to be random the way the the dirt falls and again it is in very very subtle and that's how far we'll take it. There's no reason to take it any further than that. You go any more than that, what happen is you begin to make things look very unrealistic. And if you want to, you can mix these, mix a bit of water into them and start mixing and matching to make various shades. However, that's totally up to you. I'm quite happy with this. I think that works just fine. And there we have our Bravo 6 War Daddy, AKA Bad Pit from Fury, 135th scale crewmen. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. It's a totally different type of way of how uh, I, do, I do tutorials from here on in and I really hope you guys enjoy this. Do leave your comments and your um, your thoughts in the description on, or in the comments of this uh, video and stand by for more painting tutorials that are going to be coming up in the near future. Thanks for watching, stay safe, happy modelling and watch out for those buses as always. Bye bye.